Well, she is a nanotechnologist, a researcher and educator, a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, the creator of Nano Girl, and she's made it her life mission to make science and engineering accessible for everyone. Dr. Michelle Dickinson is with us now to tell us all about her latest work, the Kitchen Science Cookbook, which combines science and cooking for hours of fun. It is so great to have you on the show. Yes. Yes. amazing book. What gave you the idea to, to, to do this? Because you haven't got enough on your plate, have no. you? <laughs> the thing is, I had a lot of um, adults, especially mothers, say, I wish I could do science at home with my kids. I was terrible at science at school, and so I feel like I'm passing that on to my daughters mm. and my sons. And, I, and then they, what they do is they'd give me a cake, because it'll be some fundraising event, and like, would you like one of my cupcakes? I'm like, <laughs> dude, that's science! And they're like, no, 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 it's baking. And I realise we have this fear around the word science, even though people are doing it every day. So I said, here's a recipe book, and we'll just sneak the science in, because you're already confident with recipes. Well, no, you know what? When I flicked through this, I thought straight away, this is the type of book that needs to be in every school, not just in New Zealand, but around the world. Yeah, it's important. Hey, so um, as a social enterprise, Nano Girl Labs, we set this up so that for everyone bought online, we donate one to a school in New Zealand. So Brilliant. it's a one-for-one wow. one offer. Um, yeah. And we've currently donated 2,000 to schools in Well, New that is a very good reason to go and buy one, because it's a great book, absolutely fantastic, and perfect for school holidays, because you need to do some. <laughs> <laughs> serious entertaining in those times. Um, how did you decide what experiments slash baking you, you were going to include in it? So I started 350 experiments. There were only 50 in the book. And then um, I put on Facebook, can any of my family friends help me? Um, thinking three of my friends with kids will help. Overnight, 2,000 people apply to be testers of the <laughs> oh, book. Wow. Yeah. So I realised, actually, I have this unique market. So I asked some of them, I'd love some single parents to actually evaluate this for me, because I want everything to be accessible. Mm. So I got my single mum squad from 24 countries around the world wow. to test the recipes. And I said, if you don't have this in your cupboard, we're not putting it in there. So that's right. how we got from that to 50, which has passed my single mum test. Perfect. So I know that every ingredient is pretty much in your cupboard, or there's an alternative that you could use instead. What drew you to science in the first place? I, I'm curious. I've always I've been asking questions. Why does this work? How does this taste? Um, and I think we're all natural scientists. I think we sort of have it drawn out of us because people are like, don't do that, don't make a mess. And nobody said that to me, mm. so I've just carried on being mischievous. And did you have good science teachers? Because I know when you're at school, the way your teacher is with you has such a lot to do with how you enjoy a subject. So I had great science teachers that didn't motivate me. I, I was a nerdy kid. I liked to pull apart the toaster at home. So I had a family who allowed me literally to break open most of the things in the house. So that sounds like me and my son. He does the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and so they didn't say, don't do that, it's broken. They said, well, now we've broken it, learn how to fix it. And so I think that home stuff too was really important. Being allowed to break something, take an egg, throw it on the floor, watch it smash, and don't be all precious about, oh, it's messy, because you can clean it up. And I learned so much about that from home. OK, cool. I'm, I'm going to crack into an experiment, I think. But just quickly, to help people understand this book, if I said viscosity, how would you relate that to this book? Yeah, so viscosity is how runny something is, right? Well, so honey is viscous, water is not viscous. Easy peasy. And she's put the classic slime in there, which is very popular. Oh, Everyone likes kids their love slime. slime. Everybody's obsessed with slime. We have an edible slime recipe oh, in there. Oh, better. Because you, you get slime in your carpet. This one, your kids eat. They're happy, you're happy. Nice. That, that, is, that, is, that is a winning formula. Yes, that <laughs> that's great. right. See, it works. OK, so should we do an experiment? What have you got for us? What can okay, we do? well, look, I've raided your kitchen. Yes, you, you know, did. Yeah. You guys had pumpkin. Pumpkin. Like, well, Would you like not? a piece? So what do you need? Okay. So, yes. so this is not in the book, but well, the thing is, there's great alternatives. So the, there's an edible candle recipe in the book, because people know how candles work. It's your birthday, you light something, it stays on fire. Yeah. It works because the wax is, has energy in it, and you burn the petroleum wax. Well, there's a, some nuts over there. These are um, just almonds. You can use any type of okay, nut. Okay, cool. Okay, why don't you just let Michelle take them? <laughs> <laughs> and so what we can do is we can make an edible candle so your kids, for their birthdays, instead of putting the candles away, can eat the candle at the oh, end of it. Good. Nuts are full of oil. Mm -hmm. Oil is also a fuel. You eat nuts because there's lots of energy because it's a fuel. I'm going to take your pumpkin. We use a banana in the recipe. You but can so, use... yeah, the raw pumpkin's probably not going to be a delicacy, but... Well, you never know. But <laughs> it, it was in your kitchen. It was something we could use. So there you go. There right. is a... Slithered almond on a pumpkin. Why don't you light that for me? Happy and if you birthday to you. If you do this, for example, with um, a banana, you can decorate it and you'll see that it burns like a candle. Oh, look at that. And if you make it out something yummy, an apple or a banana and you decorate it, your kids can then eat it. That is cool. Make a that wish blow so it out. Cool. Make a wish on, blow it out. There you go. Okay, I've made my wish. Perfect. Oh, dream came true. It was to wish to it was work to with work Mike Peru. Yeah. Can we do another, like another yes. quick one too? Because yeah. I'm going to yeah, give okay, you the cool. now. All right, <laughs> here we go. 
red cabbage. Beautiful. It's in season all year round. And <laughs> it's eating over there. And so take a few slices of red cabbage, put it in some hot water, and you'll make this beautiful red cabbage juice. Wow. Red beautiful. cabbage is really interesting. I'm going to give you some vinegar over there. Vinegar mm. is an acid. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you some baking soda. Yes. Baking soda is an alkaline. This is so much fun. And so actually, there's a chemical inside beetroot, inside red cabbage, inside blueberries that give it that beautiful purple color. It's called anthocyanin, and it's a pH indicator. It tells you if things are an acid or not. Oh. So I'm going to have you pour some of the vinegar, which is an acid, and Mel, you pour some of the baking soda into, into the, the same, other glass. Into the other glass, okay. And let's see what happens. Okay. How much do we need? As much as you want. Heaps. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> is that enough? Keep going. It's up to you. All right, that's wow. probably enough. Okay. <laughs> so, give them a swirl, and what's happened? Yes, that one's gone completely dark, hasn't Mine's it? gone purple. Yeah. And so on a pH scale, whether something's acidic or base, I can tell you that that is an acid because acids are red, and this is an alkali because alkalis are blue. Oh, that is and so And so cool. you've used a natural thing in your cupboard, blueberries or anything with that chemical or beetroot or red cabbage, and to you make just that tell me what is, in, what is acidic and what is not. And then you can take whatever's in your lunchbox, lob a bit in and see what's in your food what? and measure things around the kitchen. Well, no, and the beauty is, as you said, you know, you've made sure that people have this stuff in their cupboards. It's yeah. great bonding, and right. I think adults like myself South, learn a lot from this as well, doing it with totally. their children. This so is great. So the recipe in the book, I see some pasta over there, we also yes. stole from your kitchen. Yeah. The recipe in the book is called Unicorn Noodles. Okay. So we then cook our noodles or our pasta or whatever we want yeah. in that warm cabbage juice. It doesn't flavour it, but it colours it, and if you leave it sitting there for a couple of minutes, then your pasta or your noodles will come out of that colour, oh, and then your fun. food is colourful, and you can change its colour by putting different sauces on it. That is just incredible. Um, I love it. I am really looking forward to trying out some of these things with my kids. Yay! It has been a pleasure having you on Thank the show. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. Thank you so much. And Michelle's incredible and beautiful book, The Kitchen Science Cookbook, is available in good bookshops and online right now. And for more information about Michelle or Nano Girl, check out her website.